and it was round here. This one is not from here. Oh, okay. Um, these are, they're not quite as large, but these, these two here, um, in my right hand, this one here is the ancestor, probably of the white, the great white. And uh, this one here is another one similar, but these were pretty large sharks. Why are they, um, why are they so clean? Have you cleaned them up? I noticed well, people find them with very little growth on yeah, them. The reason for that is that uh, these are made of um, appetite, which um, is pretty tough material, just like our teeth. And uh, if, if they are on the sea floor and they're sliding backwards and forwards, um, the rest of the animal is, is um, of course, long gone because uh, it's cartilage. But these, these things here, uh, they are constantly polished by sand on the seafloor if they move and slide backwards and forwards. And because they're so tough, they will last quite a long time. Um, do I guess they can last for 20 million years or something? Or the big one, the megalodon? Or the that, one? that megalodon is, is only around about 2 million years old. Two million, these, oh, okay. these here are around about five and a half million years old from here. So they can take a lot of very fine abrasion? Well, not necessarily. You see, they are produced by erosion of the cliff. The cliff will erode. These will come out of the cliff face. Oh, okay. And uh, some will be collected. Mm. Others will be just ground away to dust. But um, here's one of the ones that... Because uh, they've been protected for so long in the cliffs. Like yeah. Millions of years. Well, that, yeah, well, that makes sense. There's also some fairly spectacular um, uh, fossils remains around here about some of the creatures and animals that were around um, in, re in relatively recent times. I wonder if you'd like to comment on them. Most interesting is this thing called Ophiomorpha. Now Ophiomorpha isn't a, an ordinary fossil, it's not a remains of a shell or a tooth or anything, it's actually a tunnel that was made by an animal, a crustacean that lived and made long burrows, perhaps up to four meters long and around about 50 millimeters in diameter. And for a long time, um, these were thought to have been perhaps made or the remains of trees, Banksia in particular, mm. but that's nonsense. They are in fact burrows and they were made by an animal perhaps rather like this. Is that, oh, is that those two at this end of those feelers and the back end of the back or is it a... Yes, this is, this is in fact um, a malt, but um, there yeah. would have been chile coming out here with oh. lippers on the end and this is the, uh, the tail folded around. Seems to be about exactly the right size for all the tracks we see scattered across yes, our geotite yes. reefs. And these things, they would be inside the tunnels and they would be um, pushing with their, their palps and their little, little uh, claws up against it and that gave it that sort of bubbly appearance. Yeah. Would people um, be able to see their tracks around here on the Ricketts Point um, Sanctuary near the marker? Yes, definitely. There's quite a few, quite nice ones, just immediately down here on the foreshore, we can see some quite attractive ones. And there was a couple of others, one of which impresses the kids, in which we, I believe we're building a, a special model of at the moment. Ah, Pelagornis. Well, Pelagornis was probably one of the largest birds that ever took to the air. And we're talking about a wingspan of over five metres. And uh, at the moment, one of these, um, a model of one of these is being prepared by the president of the Bayside Earth Science Society. He and his wife, um, Murray and Sandra Orr, are in the process of putting one together. When they, when they do, it'll be a magnificent sight and will be a testament to the, um, I suppose, the enthusiasm of Murray and Sandra. And uh, it will also be the sort of thing that will be very nice for people to see what it once would have looked like. Imagine a animal that size flying through the air above us now. And I gather it had a mouthful of teeth, a, a, a meat along beak or something. Yeah, they weren't teeth. They, Were they? The beak was, oh. was toothed. Yeah. And there's a difference between having teeth and having a toothed beak. Mm. Well, fortunately, they're not cruising past these days. Not at the moment. I, I think it's wise <laughs> to keep an eye out, though. <laughs> And was there anything else that there was? Oh yes, people talked about crocodiles down here. There was some evidence of that. Well, there have been remains of um, quite a few marine reptiles, from crocodiles through to turtles. Um, there have also been uh, as evidence of dugongs um, and uh, other mammals, some marsupials. 
in general terms, it indicates that the conditions when they were fossilized around about five and a half million years ago, that the conditions then were significantly warmer than they are today. So then the sea level would have been higher than it is now. Um, one thing that people can find, I gather, which isn't too much of a problem, because we do want our fossils protected, there's only a few spots they're really readily available, um, is the uh, little um, sea urchin, the little sea urchin shell that's found by many people on the beach up here. Yes, there's one particular section of the coast where this sort of heart urchin called Lavinia wood's eye is particularly common. And uh, it's quite nice for young children to go out and actually find a fossil that they, they can um, take home. It's not actually in the reserve, so uh, it's possible for them to, to collect it. And there's a lot of them there. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with coming down on the reserve here and seeing fossils in place and taking a photograph of them, but it's quite nice and they are sufficiently abundant for people to be able to collect the odd one or two. Yeah, the museum's doing a lot of work in this area too, isn't it, for us? It's categorising a lot. Of... Well, we've, we've got, at the moment, um, some rather nice vertebra in a rather large block of rock that uh, is going to be on display in the um, Beaumaris Motor Yacht Squadron. And uh, they are very keen and enthusiastic about having it there and we will write a story about it and hopefully it's the sort of thing that people will be able to look at and enjoy and reminisce about the past. Well, well thanks John. One, one last question. With the, uh, with the books on the sanctuary, those reference books which we all truly value, um, the fifth one's coming up now. Can you comment on that? Well the fifth book will be about insects and spiders and uh, there's a rather nice diversity of these in the in the um, sanctuary and it's it's rather interesting in many ways when you look around you you see a few things flying around but you don't really anticipate or appreciate the, the, the wide diversity of insects and spiders that are here and that's what we want to highlight and show. Well finally I guess where to it for you from now on you know with all that background experience you've brought to Bayside which we value do you see any things ahead that you'd like to be involved in or see and do? One of the things that, that we will be doing more and more, I suppose, is trying to engage with the public to get the public to appreciate what they have here. It's a very special place and the aim is to make sure that the wider community appreciates how special it is and also can enjoy it. It's a wonderful educational opportunity to learn, as I said, about the past and about how we can learn from that to live in the present and predict the future.